And good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Casual Coffee with Ken. My name is Ken. Thank you so much again for choosing to start your Monday morning with me. I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. I hope you got to do something uh, that relieved the monotony of the regular week for you and, and allowed you to recharge your batteries during this, uh, this very difficult time for a, a lot of us. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. It pretty much covers the intro, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. So yeah, this was an interesting, interesting weekend. We didn't didn't do a whole lot. Uh, I got out for a little bit on Saturday. Just went for a walk, uh, which was good. Uh, Karina has been feeling particularly bad this week. Uh, her groans has been flaring uh, quite a bit, so, and uh, <clears throat> even more so than usual, the gastroparesis has been really just hitting her hard. Her uh, the nausea has been really bad lately. So, but uh, you know we're hanging in there. Both of us are still healthy, you know, as healthy as we can be. But yeah, I again, I, I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, it's Monday, April 13th. Wow, April is already halfway over. This year is just like so many, like I've said so many times before, this, this year is just flying by. It's weird. It's no fun. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a lot of stories to get to today. So I don't know if we're going to be able to, to hit all of them, but I will make my, I will make an effort uh, to get through the whole thing. Um, there was something, uh, there was something I wanted to talk to you guys about that was on something to do with Netflix, I think. Ah, oh, it's going to drive me crazy now. This is what happens when I do not write things down. I forget. Good morning, Charles. Good to see you, as always. Hope you're doing well, sir. Hope you had a fantastic weekend and that you got to get outside for a little bit and do something enjoyable for you. Uh, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, now, this first story... It's kind of minor, okay? It's nothing earth-shattering. And for a, a lot of people, it, uh, it's been a long time coming. It's one of those great debates that really is much ado about nothing for most people. Uh, but for people such as myself uh, and Charles, growing up in the time that we did, it's, uh, it is the end of an era for us and, and other people like us. So let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about the space, or rather the after a period. It's officially over, as Microsoft Word will now automatically recognize two spaces after a period as an error. <laughs> So for, for those of us who grew up in the 80s learning to type on typewriters, we had two such typewriters, uh, typewriter models that I remember, the Pika and the Elite. And on either of them, we were taught to put two spaces after a period for easier readability. Well, some people have kept to that, even though it is fairly unnecessary in the digital age because of how things, how space, uh, how kerning, how letters are portrayed on a digital screen versus on paper. Uh, so, yeah, there's been a lot of mixed reactions. There are people who will, will never be okay with this and who will continue to put two spaces after a period no matter what Microsoft Word tells them. 
Um, a lot of people are just kind of bemoaning the death of two spaces, uh, including this particular person named Alan Chen. His tweet on April 10th said, the one spacers have won Microsoft Word now showing two spaces after a period as an error. And again, this was really just, it was a relic. The whole two spaces thing was a relic uh, from a time when, uh, because of the way letters were put on paper with a typewriter, you had the same amount of space for the letter W as you did for the letter L. So in order to really be able to see the break between sentences, you had to double space. Otherwise, it would look really strange. It wouldn't be very easy to read you know, paragraphs. So, you know, it's an old habit. I broke myself of the two space habit. It took some doing. I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning how to set the alarms on my phone, clearly. I'm still learning how to not use punctuation in text messages. Because apparently, if you put a period on the end of a sentence in a text to someone, uh, it denotes being angry uh, or miffed. It's weird. It's really weird. <laughs> Yet, Microsoft Word allows for urbonics like IDK. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I feel you, but the world moves on without us, Charles. And that's okay. <laughs> so, anyway, since it's official now, I just thought it would be fun to, to share that. Because it, it is really is the end of an era for a lot of people from my generation. So, moving on. Uh, the next positive story here. And you might think it doesn't sound very positive at first. I guess it's a it's a good news, it's a bad news, good news story. And those are still important, so I do want to report on those for you and share those with you. Uh, Disney World workers uh, are going to be furloughed, which is a fancy way of saying laid off. I don't know how those two became interchangeable, because furlough originally if I'm not mistaken, meant to be temporarily laid off with a definite date of, of returning to work. But now it seems to be used interchangeably with the term layoff. So 43,000 Disney employees are going to be furloughed, but they... Uh, they're not being hung out to dry completely because they are going to get 12 months of health benefits for free. All of those people will immediately qualify for unemployment. They will also, according to the article at fool.com, uh, continue to collect hours of credit towards pension eligibility and next year's health care benefits as if they had continued working throughout the entire year. So they're being laid off or furloughed, whatever you want to call it, but they will immediately qualify for unemployment. They will keep their health insurance and not have to pay for it. And they will continue to get all of their normal hours uh, that they can credit towards their pension eligibility and uh, retain their benefits next year. So it's, you know, it's, a, like I said, it's a mixture of bad news, but good news. So they, uh, they note in the article that the agreement is similar to a deal Disney struck with 10 Californian unions on Friday, furloughing another 28,000 Disneyland employees on April 19th. So the layoffs were 
kind of inevitable due to the the fact that there's no way to be able to accurately predict when the parks are going to be able to reopen. And not just here in the United States, but worldwide. There's there's more than just Disney World and Disneyland. So we kind of knew that this was going to happen, but thanks to the negotiating through the unions, uh, Disney has come up with a, uh, a fairly generous, all things considered, uh, agreement, arrangement with these workers, being able to keep your health insurance at no cost to you, that's that's very important in the middle of a pandemic. I think we can all agree it's really important to have your medical insurance when a pandemic has, has broken out across the world. We could get into a long discussion about just how it's such a bad idea to tie health insurance to employment, but that would be another show, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do that, but that would definitely be, that'll be a video that I would have to do on there. So, but anyway, I'm happy that the people who are being laid off by Disney are still going to have medical insurance. They're going to immediately qualify for unemployment. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's a, a sliver of good in a bad situation for so many people. So moving on to something definitely that falls under the inspirational category, inspirational kind of story. It's a four-year-old who had cancer and COVID-19 and then came out on the other side just fine, beat both of those things. So yes, of course that's inspiring. Uh, apparently, his name is uh, Archie Wilkes, and he contracted COVID-19 during treatment for neuroblastoma. And, you know, this is despite the bef best efforts of his parents, trying to keep him safe, keep everybody isolated. Uh, but they, despite all their efforts, he still tested positive for, uh, for COVID-19. Uh, he, he got the fever, everything, and you know, it, it hit him particularly hard because he was, of course, going for his regular chemotherapy treatments and immunotherapy. Uh, so, you know, it, it could have been really touch and go, uh, and it was. His, his father was actually quarantined with him there at the hospital so that's good he had his he had one of his parents with him uh, but uh but archie's father said that uh the staff who worked there at the hospital were amazing they you know they they treated them very well and they they made him quote feel at ease in what could be a worrying situation to most parents and then when uh, Archie and his father got well enough to where it would be actually safer for them and better for them to recuperate at home. They're allowed to return home. So everybody is, is back together now and doing much better. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. It's, we have to remember that as serious as COVID-19 is, and it is serious, this is more than just the flu, People are recovering. We don't seem to see as much press time given to the stories of people who are able to to come out the other side of this with, uh, you know, intact. And, and that's important. It's there are certain populations that are more susceptible to some of the uh, more serious side effects of having COVID-19. There can be some lung damage. Uh, but by and large, the people who get it do come through it and recover, and they're fine with no lasting side effects. Not everybody, but there there are 
people who are doing okay after getting it. And that's important too, because there, as I reported last week on the show, that they are doing controlled experiments where people who are critically ill with COVID-19 are being uh, are receiving transfusions, blood transfusions from people who have su- successfully recovered from COVID-19. And doing that has, has improved the health of those uh, critically ill COVID patients. They've been able, some of them who are on ventilators and dependent on those ventilators in order to live uh, after having the blood transfusions were able to be taken off of the ventilators. So, I mean, there's, there is good news and we, we need to keep that in mind. It's not all doom and gloom. We will get through this. People are getting through this right now as I'm talking to you. So please don't lose hope. Be aware, be cautious, but but don't give up. We're going to get through this. It's going to be okay, I promise. Okay, this guy, this is awesome. And I love the way that he's he's able to do what he's doing in large part due to the design of the house he lives in. So it's coronavirus kindness enhanced by architecture. So I I love this. This is great. This guy wanted to do something. And he had thought about doing some version of this for a while, like I said, just because of how his house is built. But he is now giving coffee for free to essential workers that walk by his place. That's awesome. He's not making any money really off this. I mean, I'm sure he, I mean, he might be getting some sponsorship deals now, (laughs) but so he's giving people essential workers free coffee from his home window. And as you can see, he's able to do this because of how his his house is built. <laughs> it just lends itself perfectly to being able to do this. So he just waits by his window every day with a sign that says free coffee. And if he sees a mail carrier, it says here in the article on MSN, when he sees a mail carrier or healthcare worker walking by, he offers them his services. And uh, he said, quote, I've always wanted to do something out of this window. You know, we have this nice small street where everyone knows each other. And the way he accomplishes serving the coffee to people and still maintaining social distancing is, uh, is by clever use of this toy gorilla arm. <laughs> So he puts the coffee in the hand of the gorilla and then is able to extend it to his customers. I love it. I love the inventiveness of it. I love the kindness of what he's doing. So Ben Ramirez in San Francisco, thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for, for even thinking about doing it in the first place. And, and I bring this up just about every show, I think. If you have an idea of something you can do to make people's lives easier during this time, just do it. Try it. See if it works. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. You tried, didn't work out. But if it does, like what Ben is doing, then you're, you're having an effect on people um, that goes far beyond anything that you might be able to imagine. Just the, the idea that, especially for, I mean, everybody needs kindness right now, but for essential employees who really have no choice but to go to work and do their jobs, so the rest of us can can live the way we're accustomed to living 
it's, I imagine, especially heartening to know that people are thinking about them and that they appreciate what they're doing. Now, we need to go a step or two further uh, with that. We need to pay these essential workers a real wage so they can live. Uh, and we need to give them health insurance because if it wasn't for them, everything would come to a stop. Everything. Uh, yeah. They need real pay. They need health insurance. They need paid sick time. They need it now. And uh, yeah, so in a perfect world, we would be showing our appreciation for these essential workers uh, in definitive monetary ways. Uh, but it's still nice. And they do still, I'm sure, appreciate the gesture of things like free coffee, free food, that kind of thing. But thank you, Ben, for thinking about it, for doing it. Um, and again, if you have an idea that you think might make the lives of people working on the front lines during this epidemic, try it. Because if it doesn't work, fine. But if it does, it could have a real effect on someone, maybe hundreds of people. You just don't know. Uh, and, and that's worth it. Because kindness matters, it really does, especially right now. Okay, there's there's a guy. Uh, last week I showed you guys uh, an artist who could paint things with such detail, such realism, that they looked like photographs. This guy is almost at that same level. He uh, he uses spray paints. <laughs> this is so cool. He uses spray paints to mimic neon signs. I absolutely love this. It's amazing. I mean, look at that. That was just, let's go back and let me pause it right there. Come on, go back, play, and then pause. Look at that. That looks to me, for all the world, like an actual neon sign. With spray paint. He did this with spray paint. I mean... I can spray paint something, but look at that. Look how he got the, the shadows that you would see if this was actually neon that was sitting away from the building that was actually, you know, sticking out from the side of the building. He even got, he got the shadows perfect. This is absolutely amazing to me. I just cannot even... It's, I love this. Look at that. Oh, as, and I love this. So I'm, I mean, if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know that, uh, that I am a frustrated artist. I do not have this kind of talent. My wife does, uh, and I envy her that, but it's just amazing stuff. So yeah, I just I wanted to share that with you uh, because it's it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, uh, it's extremely it just boggles my mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss for words, as you can probably tell. I will link to his website below so he can take a look uh, at things. Obviously, he has things for sale and everything. It's great. Uh, it just, it's another example of the beauty and the artistry and the talent that exists all around us. 
and I think it's good to stop and just appreciate that uh, whenever we get the chance. There's more to life than just making the money, paying the bills, doing the job. There are things that inspire us, that make us feel, you know, warm and fuzzy inside, that, uh, that, that shine a light into our souls. I think that's, that's what art is for me. I don't like everything. It wouldn't be art if we liked everything. I, I think that uh, what you consider to be art is very much a, a personal uh, preference, and that's the way it should be. It has to speak to you somehow. For me, stuff like that, um, photorealistic paintings, uh, spray paint that looks like a real neon sign, that, that kind of thing, that's always, that's always been, that's always blown my mind. I love it. And then uh, last but not least, because we are almost out of time, the best way to start your Monday, of course, is always with a cute animal, and and this cute animal is absolutely no no exception to that. <laughs> I love this little guy. Uh, this is from uh, Instagram, and that's called Pig's Land. And this little piggy. Oh my God, look at him. He's cute, right? He loves getting brushed. Look at him. Look at him getting brushed. And he's just sitting there and he loves it. This is the best day for pigs. This pig doesn't want anything else. He is perfectly content. He's just being brushed and it feels good. This is the best day for pigs right here. Look at that. Look at that guy. It does not get any better for this pig. And it's 9.58. That's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in, for spending time with me on your Monday morning. I hope this has helped uh, lift your spirits a little bit and is giving you uh, enough positivity to go out there and do whatever it is you need to do this morning on your Monday. Uh, if you have any ideas for stories or, or things, subjects that you'd like me to cover in future episodes, let me know. I'll put it down in the comments. I do see those. Uh, if you had fun today, if you like this idea of a show that, that promotes conversation between you and me during the live show and, and also just promotes positivity in general, do me a favor. After the show is done, the live show, uh, it does stay up as a video. Share the link. Share the replay link of the show with your friends. Tell them about this guy in Reno who has a show dedicated to being positive and and, and starting your day out on, on, on the right note. I'd appreciate it. It really does help. If you want to contribute to the show directly, you're certainly welcome to. I always appreciate that. You can find me on patreon.com at casual coffee, and I do have some fun rewards set up there for those who contribute on a monthly basis. So, But uh, as always, I, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you right back here tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care, and remember that when you can choose to be anything in this life, choose to be kind, because kindness matters now more than ever. Take care, everybody. I'll see you later.